Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. For those of you new here, hello, my name is Skylar. I'm a certified dog trainer and pet nutritionist. Today we are going to be doing another super highly requested video. We are going to be reviewing The Honest Kitchen. So for those of you who have not seen my brand review videos before, we take a look at kind of the company ethics, we break down the ingredient panels. Today we're going to be looking at a wide variety of the food that they offer, including the dehydrated, the clusters, some of their wet food options, and some of their toppers. So to start off, a little bit of history about The Honest Kitchen. The Honest Kitchen was technically created in 2000, but didn't become officially incorporated as a company until 2002. The Honest Kitchen is really dedicated to being an honest kitchen. They have all human grade ingredients, all of their food is made under human circumstances and not dog food circumstances. For those of you who are unfamiliar, dog food companies are not regulated by the USDA or the FDA. They're actually regulated by AFCO. While AFCO works alongside the USDA and the FDA, what they consider safe and okay for pet food is vastly different from what we consider safe and okay for people food. That being said, the fact that The Honest Kitchen does create their food with human standards says a lot about their ingredient quality as well as their sourcing and the way that they produce their food. The Honest Kitchen is an independent company, which I certainly much prefer on this channel just because when you're working with bigger companies like Nestle, typically the ingredient sourcing is not as great and not as picky because you are having to cater to a much wider audience. So definitely keep that in mind when you're considering big companies versus the smaller alternatives. The Honest Kitchen does not use any corn, wheat, soy, or byproducts, which we love. That's kind of the bare minimum for an acceptable food here on this channel. They also don't have any ingredients that come from China, although they do source globally. And they specialize in dehydrated foods. So it's not freeze dried, there's no raw in it, but it is minimally processed, especially compared to kibble. What I really appreciate about Honest Kitchen is that they have quite a lot of information on their website regarding their food safety standards, their ingredient standards, where they get their ingredients, and how the food is made. So I definitely recommend, I'll link it down in the description, to go check out their website, flick through those infographics, because again, I really appreciate that. And it does say a lot about the company, whether they share those details or not. So let's go ahead and we will take a look at the dehydrated whole grain beef recipe for dogs. This means that the beef must make up at least 25% of the overall food. We also take a look at the first five ingredients. We have dehydrated beef, organic oats, organic barley, organic flaxseed, dehydrated potatoes. I'm not a huge fan of potato, it is in a lot of foods, but white potato itself can be really high in sugar and it can be high in starch. I personally prefer to see sweet potato in formulas just because the high starch and high sugar content in white potato can exacerbate yeast in a lot of dogs. It's also, again, high in natural sugars, which makes it hard for dogs that need a low glycemic load. But we're followed up by carrots, eggs, apples, parsley, cranberries, and spinach, which are all really great ingredients to see. I've also went ahead and included the breakdown of the protein, fat, fiber, moisture, and I also added the carbohydrate. Pet food manufacturers are not required to include the carbohydrate count, and that's purely to their own advantage. So I did include it there at the bottom so that we can kind of compare it to other foods as well as compare it to itself. So looking at this food, it's a great ingredient panel overall. I especially love that it's dehydrated because it forces you to include water. So not only is the dehydrated food much less processed than a traditional kibble would be, you're also adding in that moisture, which is essential to the health of your pet. Now obviously looking down at the breakdown analysis, it's much more carbohydrate than I would like to see in a food. When we take a look at the primordial diet, dogs should biologically only be having 12 to 15 percent carbohydrate in their diet, which is much less than the 45-ish that we have estimated down here. 
my best recommendation if you are feeding the dehydrated foods from Honest Kitchen is to add more meat to the foods to make that balance a little bit closer to where it should be. Food number two, we are taking a look at the whole food clusters, and this one's the grain-free chicken. This particular food is the chicken recipe, which again means that it uses the 25% rule and chicken must make up at least 25% of the food. For our first five ingredients, we have chicken, potatoes, peas, chicken liver, and lentil. Again, I'm not a huge fan of the white potato used in these formulas, although I do know the potato and the pea are used as binders to hold the cluster's shape. Beyond those first five ingredients, we see a lot of other beneficial ingredients, such as the carrots, the flaxseed, eggs, broccoli, pumpkin's a great one, coconut oil's a great one, and I do like seeing that there's some egg down there in the ingredient panel as well. The clusters do have a higher protein count and less carbohydrate, which we do like to see. However, I would again encourage you to add more meat to this formula in order to make it more balanced and lower that carbohydrate count. We have our first cat food up next, it's the dehydrated grain-free turkey recipe. This one again is turkey recipe, so it utilizes the 25% rule. The first five ingredients, we have dehydrated turkey, dehydrated eggs, dehydrated pumpkin, dehydrated potatoes, and dried parsley. Now the cat one you'll notice has significantly higher protein and significantly lower carbohydrate. This is in part because cats are obligate carnivores and require a much higher protein percentage than dogs. However, it's still not as high in protein as I would personally like to see. Again, when we look at the primordial diet, cats should be getting 2-5% to carbohydrate and the rest should be meat. Along those same lines, I personally would have preferred to see a similar breakdown in the dog formulas in that we have turkey and egg, two different animal proteins as the first two ingredients, and then the pumpkin, potato, parsley, kale, all of that stuff is closer to the opposite end of the ingredient panel. I definitely, again, would add meat to this formula, um, but it is a good panel. Taking a look at the butcher's block wet food, this is the chicken and super greens. The first five ingredients, we have chicken, chicken bone broth, chicken liver, broccoli, carrots, and then kale and spinach and agar agar, which is a thickener. And that's essentially all of the ingredients and then the vitamins and minerals. Now, here's the thing when we're looking at wet foods that I get questions about all the time. If I had a dollar for every time somebody looked at their kibble and looked at their canned food and said, this one, the kibble has more meat, why? I would be rich. I totally get why there could be some confusion there and it's a super simple reason. And it's because you're looking at the total 100% of the food. Obviously, wet food is gonna have much more moisture than the dry food. Therefore, the moisture, the water, the bone broth, the moisture count is going to be much higher than the 10 to 12% that's typically in kibbles. Because the moisture percentage is so high, it's gonna make all the other percentages seem much smaller in comparison. So while this particular food has 12.5% protein, I need you to understand that most of this food is made up of chicken. Now the thing that we really do want to look at on here is that the carbohydrate count is less than 1%, which is fantastic. Overall, the Butcher Block Pate is a pretty good option. It has a good looking ingredient panel, and again, it's gonna help raise that meat content as well as raise that moisture content in whatever food you're feeding, which we always, always, always want. We're a big fan of adding to your kibble or adding to your food on this channel. So next we have the One Pot Stew. This one is the Simmered Salmon and Chicken Stew with brown rice and broccoli. This one here, we know at least 25% of the formula has to be the salmon and chicken. And this formula also uses the with rule, which means that there must be at least 3% rice and 3% broccoli in the formula itself. First five ingredients for this one, we have salmon, chicken, fish bone broth, water, and brown rice. We also have broccoli, tapioca, peas, sunflower oil, and then all of the vitamins and minerals that make this food complete and balanced. 
This one in particular, there's a couple things that I personally would do differently. I would rather see the water removed and just more bone broth added. I'm a huge fan of bone broth. It has a ton of different health benefits and I will definitely be doing a video touching on all the different benefits of incorporating bone broth into your foods at some point, but I would much rather see that the water not be there and then instead be used a little bit more bone broth. Why not? This one also uses tapioca as a thickener, which it's used as a thickener. It has a real purpose. It's not a filler. I get that and that makes it okay. That makes me totally fine with it. What some companies will do with tapioca, and it's primarily in kibbles, is they'll use it as a filler that's not soy, um, but it still holds low nutritional value. So in kibbles, that kind of stuff, beware of tapioca. That's why I often kind of hesitate when I see tapioca. But in this particular formula, it is being used as a thickener, which I'm cool with. This one does have a higher carbohydrate count than the butcher block that we just looked at. And that is because it must have that rice and that broccoli in there as well. Last but not least, we will take a look at the toppers. Now, what's the difference between a topper and a wet food? The toppers are not complete and balanced, and you will see that when we look at these ingredient panels, that they don't have the added vitamins and minerals the other two did. They also don't have enough of all of the whole foods to make up that vitamins and minerals naturally. So these ones are really, really good if you're adding to your food, which again, we're big fans of. We love adding to our food on this channel. It's essential if you're feeding a dry food. So first one we're going to take a look at is the chicken superfood pour over. This one, we have chicken bone broth, chicken, spinach, kale, broccoli, and we also have tapioca, potato, and turmeric. Again, we talked about the potato and we talked about the tapioca. In these cases, it's being used more as a thickener, which I can get over. But the bone broth and the chicken are the first two ingredients. I've personally used these pour overs. It is just essentially a thicker bone broth with some chunks, which I really appreciate. These pour overs are also gonna be great to use if you have a picky dog or an older dog just because they create really good palatants. So what a palatant is, is it's something in the food that makes it extra tasty, that encourages your pet to eat. And if your pet is feeling sick, if he's older, if he's picky, bone broths and things like this one here are gonna be really good add to's that will entice them to eat. And once they get going, chances are they will continue. And then last but not least, we're gonna take a look at the meal booster. This one, very important to point out, it says 99 salmon and pollock on the box, therefore it must be 99% salmon and pollock. This falls into a 95 to 99% rule where what's on there as 99% must make up 99% of what is in that food. We also have the 100% rule, which obviously means Everything in that can must be 100% what it says it is. That means that we have salmon and pollock, and then water for processing, and then the agar agar, which is a thickener. But this particular container is mostly 99% salmon and pollock, which makes it an excellent add to to all of the dehydrated formulas that we've already talked about in order to raise that protein count and in turn lower the carbohydrate count. Now before I get into my final thoughts about the Honest Kitchen, I do need to take a second to talk about their one and only recall. So while we do these brand reviews, I feel the need to talk about recalls. I think it's very important when you're comparing brands and looking at their quality standards, their company ethics, the things that they do that really benefit you as a consumer. However, I also understand that sometimes recalls happen, but it's all really looking at why this happened, how this happened, how they responded to it, and how often this happens. In the case of Honest Kitchen, they've only had one recall and it was back in 2013. It was a voluntary recall, which means that there was nothing 
proven to be wrong with these foods, but they chose to recall the product as a safety precaution. It's also important to note that these recalls, just in general, are very expensive and can damage your reputation. So the fact that they did a voluntary recall tells me that they were very concerned about their customer base. They obviously sport that they have very high standards and they wanted to make sure that they're meeting those high standards. In 2013, they recalled five lots of their dehydrated food because their supplier of parsley had a recall due to possible salmonella contamination. Therefore, the Honest Kitchen recalled the foods in which they may have used these possibly contaminated parsley. I personally view the way that they handled this to be proof that they do have very high standards and they do care for their customer base, but I just wanted to put that out there, make sure that this was as thorough and transparent as possible, and you can make your own decision if you would like to feed Honest Kitchen. Now, my final thoughts. I am a huge fan of the Honest Kitchen dehydrated foods because it's a super, super easy transition for people who have been feeding kibble and don't want to give up the convenience of feeding kibble. As I've talked about in plenty of my videos, kibble was created for the convenience of the consumer, as for the convenience of the pet owner, and not necessarily the health and wellness of the pets. So we all know on this channel now that kibble's not good. You can even have the best kibble in the world, but it's still a kibble. And The Honest Kitchen gives an easy way to start transitioning people into thinking more about what's best for their animal. And while The Honest Kitchen does add an extra step of adding water to the food and letting it sit and soften up before you feed it, you're still opening a bag, pouring it into a bowl. It's super convenient and much more digestible for a lot of people who are more nervous about raw. That being said, The Honest Kitchen is lower in protein than I would like, and therefore I do obviously recommend supplementing with meat, with canned food, with raw, just to bring up that protein count and lower the carbohydrate. My other big con about Honest Kitchen is that it is pretty expensive. Obviously, since it's a dehydrated food, you get like this much in a package, and it actually makes like this much in reality once you add water. But the food itself is quite a big upfront cost, and it also costs more per pound than, again, most kibbles. So overall, The Honest Kitchen is a really good option for people wanting to stray away from kibble, maybe give something a little bit healthier than kibble, while still keeping the convenience of kibble. It's also going to be a great option for people who are wanting to incorporate more raw into the diet, but maybe aren't ready to do a 100% raw diet and want to do a half and half. Or if you're already feeding kibble and you want to add something to it so it's not so dry, so kibble heavy of a diet, then you can absolutely do half and half and add all that moisture in there and make your kibble so much better. Honest Kitchen, both their dehydrated and their clusters, as well as their canned food and their toppers are just really great options. They come with great sourcing, great ingredients, great company ethics, and I would and do feel totally comfortable feeding them to my pets, for sure. If you have any other questions about Honest Kitchen or about any other pet food, please leave those down in the comments below and be sure to like this video if you learned something today. Of course, when you guys recommend that I talk about different foods, it bumps them straight up to the top of my list of foods that I want to talk about. So if there's a brand that you want to hear about, be sure to leave those in the comments down below. And if somebody's already suggested it, give it a bunch of thumbs up and that'll definitely let me know that you would like that video in the future. If you have not already, please be sure to subscribe. I do videos every Training Tuesday and Feeding Friday, so you get a good mix of training and behavior, as well as feeding and nutritional advice, which, if you have a pet, is a great free resource for you. I would highly encourage you to subscribe. I will see you in my next video. Bye.